Further north we have the central section of the Philippine Islands known as the Visayas region. This consists of numerous islands with the western region of Mimaropa also included in this section. This area is very popular with typhoons as you're about to find out. Since 1950, no less than 260 cyclone landfalls have been recorded on these islands, many storms making more than one. These include 146 tropical storm landfalls, 57 as a Category 1 typhoon, 27 at Category 2, 13 at Category 3, 14 at Category 4, and 4 powerful Category 5 landfalls. The costliest cyclone by a fair margin in this region was Typhoon Haiyan, causing at least $1.4 billion in damages. It is also now the deadliest, overtaking Thelma's impact in the region, with over 5,600 fatalities. Haiyan was the last storm to make landfall here. In early December 1951, a tropical storm formed near the Micronesian Islands and proceeded westwards, quickly becoming a typhoon for over a day before weakening. The tropical storm, named Amy, then turned slightly towards the north, resulting in a track that would take it safely north of Yap. Amy intensified as it passed the island and soon afterwards became a Category 3 storm as it continued slowly westwards. For a short time near the Philippines, Amy peaked as a Category 4 typhoon with sustained winds of 140 miles per hour and a central pressure of 950 millibars. The storm then began to weaken but scraped the coast of Samar and made landfall on the island of Leyte as a Category 2 typhoon, an intensity it maintained as it crossed the rest of the Visayas region. Amy weakened a little more as it crossed Palawan and began to pull towards the north before stalling and fluctuating in intensity. Amy reached a secondary peak as it turned back towards the southwest, now over the South China Sea, and gradually weakened until dissipation, by which point the storm was closer to Vietnam. A week before the storm's arrival, the eruption of Mount Hibok Hibok killed 500 on Kamiquin and erupted again as Amy passed through on the 10th. This caused significantly worse damage than what would have otherwise been seen by the storm. In all, possibly up to 1,000 died along the storm's path, with damages amounting to $30 million. In November 1990, a tropical depression formed over Micronesia and continued towards the west for two days before intensifying to become Tropical Storm Mike. Further development occurred and Mike was a Category 4 typhoon by the time it made a very close approach to Palau. Shortly afterwards, Mike became a Category 5 super typhoon and peaked with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central pressure of 915 millibars. Mike weakened somewhat before landfall in the Philippines, striking Leyte as a Category 4 storm and making three more landfalls afterwards. By the time Mike entered the South China Sea, it was a minimal typhoon. The storm strengthened a little once more, becoming a Category 2 storm, before weakening again and striking Hainan as a tropical storm and mainland China as a tropical depression. Torrential rain and heavy flooding occurred in the Philippines, along with very strong winds and numerous mudslides. In total, 748 fatalities were reported and damages amounted to $220 million. In early November 1991, a tropical disturbance formed near Micronesia and tracked towards the northwest for a number of days, only becoming a tropical depression far to the north of Palau. After three days of slow westward movement, the system became Tropical Storm Thelma and approached the Philippines, beginning to move towards the southwest now. The storm struck the island of Samar and then Leyte before moving through Cebu and Negros Islands, followed by Palawan as it entered the South China Sea, striking all of these islands as a tropical storm. Thelma weakened from this point onwards and was barely a tropical depression by the time it came ashore Vietnam. The storm dumped over 20 inches of rainfall in some parts of the country. The worst of the conditions occurred in the city of Ormoc on the island of Leyte. With the surrounding area mostly deforested, floodwaters raged through the area along with multiple landslides and a reported water level rise of 7 feet inside 15 minutes. Here, nearly 5,000 people lost their lives. Across the Philippines, there were as many as 8,000 fatalities and damages of nearly $28 million.
In mid-June 2008, a tropical depression formed towards the northwest of Palau and soon became Tropical Storm Fengshan. The storm began to approach the central Philippines and intensified as it did so, becoming a typhoon 12 hours before landfall in Samar. The storm now passed over more water south of the island of Masbot, allowing it to intensify into a Category 3 typhoon as it passed one blown. The typhoon turned towards the north and made landfall in Luzon, weakening again now as it passed close to Manila. Fengshan weakened into a tropical storm before emerging over the South China Sea, where it continued towards the northwest and ultimately made landfall in China near Hong Kong. In the Philippines, flooding and mudslides killed nearly 600, mostly on the islands it passed close to. Around 700 more lost their lives after a ferry ship sank. In total, over 1,400 are thought to have died, with damages totaling $480 million. In November 2013, a tropical depression formed between Pompeii and Chuk, Micronesia. After 18 hours, this system developed into tropical storm Haiyan. The storm continued towards the west, just south of most of the Micronesian islands, and after a day intensified into a typhoon. From here, the storm continued to develop at rather a pace, and nearly two days after becoming a typhoon, Haiyan was now a Category 5 super typhoon, an intensity it would maintain for two days. The storm first brushed the island of Palau and continued to intensify as it made its approach to the Philippines. Haiyan reached a historic peak intensity with one minute sustained winds of 195 miles per hour, the highest recorded in over 50 years and highest ever in the period of modern observations. This was accompanied by an air pressure of 895 millibars or perhaps even lower than that. Haiyan is believed to have maintained its intensity as it passed over Giwan in eastern Samar and probably weakened slightly before landfall near Taklaban on the island of Leyte. Haiyan maintained its Category 5 intensity as it clipped the tip of Cebu and crossed northern Panay and weakened into a Category 4 storm as it passed over the Calamian Islands. The storm continued through the South China Sea on a weakening trend now and passed close to Hainan as a Category 1 storm before making landfall in Vietnam still as a typhoon. The storm caused catastrophic damage along its path, particularly in the eastern Visayas where it made its first landfalls. The storm resulted in over 5,000 confirmed fatalities as of November 22nd and a preliminary damage total of nearly $1.4 billion. Both of these totals may be found to be higher in future. Now to the northern extent of the Philippines, featuring the main island of Luzon and its smaller islands offshore. Another typhoon hotspot, particularly on the east coast, this region is used to encountering the threat of typhoons several times each year. Since 1950, this region has seen 253 landfalls, 96 as tropical storms, 60 Category 1 typhoons, 30 Category 2 storms, 27 major Category 3 typhoons, 29 Category 4 storms, and no less than 10 Category 5 super typhoon landfalls, more than double any other region covered in Hurricane Week. The costliest cyclone was Palmer in 2009, causing $608 million in damages. Winnie in 2004 was the deadliest, the depression causing nearly 1,600 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall was Typhoon Crozer earlier this year. In mid-November 1987, a tropical depression formed in the equatorial western Pacific, not far from the international dateline. The depression passed just south of Cosre in the far eastern Micronesian islands, and then subsequently south of Pompeii, at which point tropical storm Nina was named. Nina continued towards the northwest, intensifying gradually to become a typhoon west of Chuk. The storm then passed north of Yap before intensifying further. Eventually, Nina became a Category 3 storm just over a day from the Philippines. The storm continued to intensify and Nina peaked as a Category 5 super typhoon shortly before landfall in southern Luzon, with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a central pressure of 930 millibars. The storm weakened as it entered the South China Sea, but remained a significant typhoon for two more days before looping towards the east and then southwards, weakening significantly by now. The storm dissipated over open waters. Nina caused significant damage in Chuk, killing five and leaving 40,000 homeless. In the Philippines, storm surge was the main culprit, consuming numerous settlements along the eastern coast. Well over 500 were killed, possibly over a thousand, and up to 100,000 were rendered homeless as a result of the storm. In late November 2006, a tropical depression formed near Chuk, Micronesia, and progressed towards the west-northwest, becoming a tropical storm between Chuk and Yap. 
The storm, named Durian, passed just north of Yap and now approached the Philippines. Durian promptly became a typhoon and continued to intensify quickly now, peaking as a Category 4 super typhoon near its landfall in southern Luzon, with sustained winds of 155 miles per hour and a central pressure of 915 millibars. The storm weakened significantly as it was disturbed by land interaction, though remained a typhoon as it passed over the South China Sea, strengthening for a time before weakening once again as it neared Vietnam, making landfall in the far south of the country as a strong tropical storm. Durian quickly weakened into a depression and intensity it maintained until landfall in Thailand. The storm became a remnant low near the Andaman Islands. The storm caused significant damage in the Philippines, mainly in the form of flooding and strong winds, particularly in southeastern Luzon. Damage also occurred in Vietnam, with 98 fatalities reported here. Numerous mudslides in the Philippines contributed to a total death toll approaching 2,000 here. In total, Durian caused damages of over $500 million. In September 2009, a tropical depression formed in the Philippine Sea and developed into Tropical Storm Ketsana before moving over central Luzon as a tropical storm. The storm continued into the South China Sea and went on to strike Vietnam as a Category 2 typhoon. Before Ketsana even dissipated, a new storm formed over Micronesia and posed another long-range threat to the Philippines. Tropical Storm Palma, as it was named, passed between Yap and Palau, intensifying into a typhoon while at it, and advanced towards the northwest whilst continuing to strengthen. Palma peaked as a Category 4 typhoon out to sea, but gradually weakened before landfall in northeastern Luzon, still as a Category 2 storm. Palma then crossed the northern extremity of Luzon and remained a typhoon until located just northwest of the island, where it stalled and executed a U-turn, making another landfall on Luzon as a tropical storm. Palma then turned to the east, edge out over sea once more and weakened into a tropical depression as it moved back over northern Luzon, almost stalling as it entered the South China Sea before moving off again and re-attaining tropical storm intensity on approach to Hainan, China. The storm struck the island as a tropical storm and slowed down in forward motion once more before making landfall in Vietnam. Historic amounts of rainfall and flooding are experienced in parts of Luzon, including in Manila as a result of Ketsana. Landslides caused further devastation and floodwaters exceeded 10 feet in some areas. In total, 464 lost their lives in the Philippines, and damages here amounted to $237 million. Further damage was caused by Typhoon Palma, which struck the next week, causing more flooding. In total, 500 were killed by Palma, 465 in the Philippines, with total damages amounting to $617 million by that storm. In August 2011, a tropical depression formed in the Philippine Sea and initially started moving towards the north and turned towards the west as it became tropical storm Nanmadol. The new cyclone headed slowly closer to the Philippines and upon becoming a typhoon quickly intensified. Eventually, Nanmadol became a Category 5 super typhoon, peaking with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 925 millibars. The intense storm grazed the northeastern tip of Luzon and then moved on to Taiwan, striking the southern end of the island as a Category 1 typhoon. Nanmadol slowed down on approach to China and made landfall there as it weakened into a tropical depression. Heavy rain and flooding occurred in the Philippines along with very strong winds and the spawning of two tornadoes. Taiwan also felt the force of the storm, with landslides occurring here. Less severe, though nonetheless significant damage also occurred in China. In total, the storm caused up to 52 fatalities, a further 57 injuries, and over $600 million in damages. The very next month, a tropical depression formed to the north of Yap and soon became Tropical Storm Nisat. This storm continued towards the west and developed into a typhoon in the Philippine Sea, intensifying gradually at first, but then rapidly not very long before striking Luzon. Nisat peaked as a Category 4 typhoon with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 950 millibars, striking the Philippines near this intensity. Nisat remained a typhoon as it passed over the South China Sea and struck northeastern Hainan, China, weakening after this. Finally, the storm made landfall in Vietnam as a tropical storm and quickly dissipated. The storm caused heavy rain over northern and central Luzon, with a storm surge causing significant damage along the eastern coast. 
In total, the storm caused 96 fatalities and damages of $1.24 billion, most of it in the Philippines. On the other side of the South China Sea, we have the eastern coast of Vietnam, adjoining China to the north and the rest of Southeast Asia to its west. Partly due to the Philippines being in the way, Vietnam doesn't often receive intense typhoon landfalls, though plenty of storms cause disruption here, usually at least one each year. Since 1950, 170 cyclones have made landfall, 110 were tropical storms, 43 Category 1 typhoons, 12 Category 2 storms, and 5 major Category 3 typhoon landfalls. The costliest cyclone was Typhoon Ketsana in 2009, causing $785 million in damages. The deadliest was Linda in 1997, killing over 3,000. The last storm to make landfall was Tropical Depression Podol earlier this month. In mid-October 1971, a tropical disturbance formed towards the northwest of Palau and began to move just south of west as it gradually developed. After a day, the system became Tropical Storm Hester, and the storm began to approach the southern Philippines. Hester made landfall a day later near the northern tip of Mindanao, followed by more landfalls in the Visayas region. Nonetheless, Hester continued to intensify and crossed Palawan as a Category 1 typhoon. The storm continued towards the northwest, attaining a peak intensity as a Category 2 storm with sustained winds of 105 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 967 millibars, before making landfall in war-torn South Vietnam near this intensity. Significant damage and flooding resulted from the storm in Vietnam, with 121 fatalities reported and damages amounting to $3.6 million. In May 1989, a tropical depression formed in the South China Sea and proceeded towards the northwest at first, intensifying to become Tropical Storm Cecil after 12 hours. The storm continued in this direction, curving towards the west-northwest over the course of the next 48 hours and peaked as a Category 1 typhoon shortly before landfall in Vietnam. Heavy rain accumulated over Vietnam, with as many as 20 inches falling in some areas. Widespread flooding was the result, contributing to the destruction of over 10,000 homes, and nearly 30,000 more were damaged. In total, the storm caused 75 fatalities and damages of nearly $72 million. In October of that same year, a tropical disturbance was first noted over Micronesia and attained a tropical depression status east of Yap. Passing just north of the island as a tropical depression, the system soon after developed into Tropical Storm Dan and continued towards the west-northwest. Strengthening continued and Dan became a typhoon near the Philippines. The storm brushed the northern coast of Samar and then began to affect Luzon, passing very close to Manila. Weakening to a tropical storm as it entered the South China Sea, Dan pushed on west-northwestwards and soon reattained its typhoon status, holding it until landfall in Vietnam. The storm caused severe damage in the Philippines, particularly in Luzon, and most notably in the Manila area. In Vietnam, a storm surge and heavy rain damaged half a million homes or more. In total, Dan caused 101 fatalities and damages amounting to nearly $60 million. In early June 2004, a tropical depression formed just east of Mindanao in the Philippines and after 12 hours developed into Tropical Storm Chan Thu shortly before striking Leyte Island. The storm crossed over the rest of the Visayas region and emerged into the South China Sea, still as a tropical storm. Eventually, Chan Thu intensified into a typhoon half a day before landfall in Vietnam, where it struck as a Category 1 storm. In Vietnam, the storm caused heavy rain and flooding. These conditions prevailed into Thailand as well. In total, there were 39 fatalities and damages of $8 million. In 2009, Tropical Storm Ketsana passed through the Philippines and intensified into a Category 2 typhoon before making landfall near peak intensity in Vietnam. Widespread and substantial amounts of flooding occurred here, with strong winds also causing damage. In some areas, the amount of flooding was virtually unprecedented, and hundreds of thousands were evacuated. In Vietnam, the storm caused 163 fatalities in total, and damages of nearly $800 million.
Moving towards the northeast now, we have the coast of southern China, including Hainan Island, as well as Hong Kong and Macau, which lie halfway along. This area often sees tropical storms and typhoons, many of which passing through the Philippines or Taiwan first though. However, more short-lived storms also form in the South China Sea before affecting the region. Since 1950, this region has received 297 landfalls more than any other. Of these, 156 were tropical storms, 86 Category 1 typhoons, 25 Category 2 storms, 13 Category 3 major typhoons, and 7 intense Category 4 storms. To date, no storm has struck as a Category 5. The costliest cyclone was Typhoon Usagi this year, causing at least $2.8 billion in damages. The deadliest storm was Typhoon Wanda of 1962, causing 434 fatalities here. The last storm to make landfall here was Haiyan when it made its final landfall earlier this year. In late August 1962, a tropical depression formed well to the north of Yap, Micronesia, and developed into Tropical Storm Wanda in the Philippine Sea. This storm continued towards the west-northwest and became a typhoon a day before its closest approach to the Philippines. In that time, it strengthened further and peaked as a Category 2 typhoon as it entered the South China Sea. Wanda made landfall on Hong Kong as a strong Category 1 storm and quickly weakened inland. Wanda became one of the worst storms for Hong Kong, causing 434 fatalities and leaving 72,000 homeless. Exact damage totals are unknown, but it is thought to be in the region of several million dollars. In July 1989, a tropical depression formed to the northeast of the northern Mariana Islands and passed through those northernmost islands before it became Tropical Storm Gordon as it moved just south of west. The storm continued in this somewhat unusual direction for a number of days and began intensifying more quickly upon reaching typhoon status. Gordon went on to peak as a severe Category 5 super typhoon with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 915 millibars. Gordon made landfall at this intensity near the northern tip of Luzon, the Philippines. Gordon weakened as it crossed over land but remained a typhoon in the South China Sea and weakened further as it began to interact with China, making landfall as a tropical storm. Gordon dissipated near the Vietnam border. The super typhoon caused a significant damage in the Philippines, destroying nearly 10,000 homes, accompanied by flooding in some areas. In Hong Kong and Macau, strong winds downed trees and blew out windows. In China, widespread flooding occurred, destroying thousands of homes here. In total, 306 fatalities occurred along the storm's path, along with $381 million in damages. In early September 1996, a tropical depression formed over Micronesia near Chuk and continued towards the northwest, initially at a fair pace, before slowing down somewhat. Eventually the system developed into Tropical Storm Sally and was a typhoon 18 hours later. The next day Sally approached Luzon as a Category 3 major typhoon and continued to intensify, passing close to the northern tip of the Philippines at its peak intensity as a Category 5 super typhoon with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 940 millibars. Sally crossed the South China Sea, still remaining a Category 4 storm, and made landfall in China as a significant Category 3 typhoon, dissipating over the Asian continent far inland. The storm caused minor damage in Hong Kong, but caused severe problems in China, destroying an estimated 300,000 homes and likely damaging many more to a greater or lesser degree. In total, the storm caused 270 fatalities and damages of $1.5 billion, almost all of it in China. At the end of July 2006, a tropical depression formed in the Philippine Sea, northeast of the Visayas region. The depression veered towards southern Luzon but turned towards the northwest and instead struck further north, crossing the island near its widest point. On the other side, the depression intensified to become Tropical Storm Prapirun over the South China Sea. Prapirun became a typhoon halfway between the Philippines and China and maintained Category 1 intensity until landfall. Heavy rains in the Philippines killed six, with China bearing the brunt of the storm. Moderate damage occurred in Hong Kong, causing disruption to transportation. In China, nearly 10,000 homes were destroyed and over 200,000 were displaced. In total, a storm caused over 100 fatalities and damages of nearly $1 billion. In October 2010, a tropical depression formed between Guam and Yap and soon developed into Tropical Storm Meggy. The storm was stalled initially but began to move towards the west-northwest 
and after a day and a half became a typhoon. Two days later, Meggy was well on its way to becoming a ferocious super typhoon, which it achieved to the east-northeast of Luzon. Meggy maintained Category 5 intensity for 30 hours, and during that time peaked with sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and a central pressure of 885 millibars. Meggy struck the Philippines at Category 5 intensity, weakening as it moved over land. Bottoming out as a Category 2 storm, Meggy intensified again in the South China Sea, reaching a secondary peak as a Category 4 typhoon. From here, the storm moved fairly slowly towards the north and struck China as it lost typhoon status. The storm caused extensive damage in the Philippines with widespread disruptions to transport, electricity and communications. In Taiwan, flooding and landslides killed 38. In China, the storm caused widespread damages, a lot of it agricultural, and it was here where the biggest financial losses occurred. In total, the storm killed 73 and caused over $700 million in damages. In August 2013, a tropical depression formed northwest of Yap, Micronesia, and developed into Tropical Storm Utor less than a day later. 18 hours later, Utor was a typhoon and intensified quickly after this, peaking the next day as a strong Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 925 millibars. Utor made landfall near this intensity in Luzon, the Philippines, remaining a Category 2 typhoon as it emerged into the South China Sea. The storm attained a secondary peak as a Category 3 major typhoon and weakened some before landfall in China. The storm stalled inland for nearly four days before dissipating. In the Philippines, heavy rain and strong winds caused power outages and flooding, though damages weren't particularly severe, amounting to $25 million. Up to 14 were killed during Utor's passage there. In China, widespread and severe flooding occurred in Guangxi and Hunan provinces. In total, the storm caused 38 fatalities and damages amounting to $2.3 billion. The next month, another storm formed, this time Tropical Storm Usagi, which was slow moving to begin with as it drifted towards the west over the Philippine Sea. Two days after forming, Usagi became a typhoon and intensified very quickly after this. Indeed, Usagi had reached Category 5 Super Typhoon status just 30 hours after first becoming a typhoon. The storm began to weaken as it passed between the Philippines and Taiwan, closer to the latter, and continued on to China where it made landfall as a significant typhoon. The storm's effects were felt in the Philippines and Taiwan, though effects were not serious here. In China, however, the storm caused heavy damage, with many thousands of homes destroyed. In total, Usagi was responsible for 50 fatalities and $3.8 billion in damages. <laughs> 